Let's uh, turn to the book of Ephesians. Thank you, brother. In the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to be looking at just one verse today. And I hope it's going to be a help to you in your walk with the Lord. And uh, this, this journey that we're on, <clears throat> we're spiritual beings on our earthly pilgrimage here. And uh, I want to, to know that uh, I conclude my destination where God intends for me to be. And to get there is sometimes very combative with the weakness of our flesh. And the Lord knows about that because He, uh, he gave us the precious Holy Spirit uh, to enable us to live out this Christian life. Because in and of the flesh, uh, you won't succeed. Uh, Terry and I last week celebrated 35 years of salvation. Uh, on May 31st, 1982, we were both prayed and asked Jesus to save us. And uh, Now you would think after 35 years, yeah, next month, hard to believe, but I've been married to her for 40 years next month. And of course, when we got married, I was 19, and she was 16, and it's been good. No, she, she, was, she was still young. She was 17, but uh, God blessed us and uh, gave us a great family. And uh, boy, when he saved us, so it changed everything. You know, I was, a, I was a, actually, I was racing back in those days, and I was a chemical plant operator for Occidental Chemical Company in White Springs, Florida. And then the Lord came into our lives and gave us new direction yeah. and showed us where He wanted us to do and fulfilled our God-given purpose. You know, I didn't have a dad growing up. My granny adopted me and raised me, so I lacked a sense of direction or purpose. But after salvation, you know, the Lord changed all that. He redirected us and sent us where He wanted us to be. And I will forever be grateful that he did that. And Brother Hal uh, came by our home and shared the gospel. Uh, the Lord called him home. He was uh, 56 years old when he was called home not long ago. And uh, I miss him dearly. But I'm sure glad he was a great soul winner. Uh, I told his wife the other day that he has a lot of spiritual grandchildren out there. And I'm, just because he went out soul winning one night, you never know what, what's going to happen when you obey the Lord. Well, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 simply says this, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, you'd think after 35 years of being saved that the journey would be just a bit easier than when you first began. I know that when Terry and I was first saved, one of the things the church did for us, they gave us a book entitled The Survival Kit. And it's a little workbook, and you work on that book about, you know, 15 minutes a day, five days a week. And one of the, the teachings in that book is about the old nature and the new nature. And it defines out for you the struggle that you're about to encounter. You know, when you're out here lost, you have nothing but the flesh, and you deal with the flesh, and, and uh, you don't really have the conviction and the wooings and the drawings of the Holy Spirit of God, and you don't understand the, you know, the combative nature. In fact, you're just blind. I know as a lost man, I didn't have any concept of the, you know, the spiritual arena out here, but when we got saved, suddenly our eyes were open, and we began to see a brand new you know, atmosphere, a brand new sphere of life altogether of the Holy Spirit's realm where He works the kingdom of God. And as a consequence of that, you know, this, our salvation, there's one need we have yet, and that is this, the new glorified body. And praise God, we're going to be getting that body for long, and you won't have to have glasses anymore. In fact, you're going to have glorified taste buds. Man, you think ta food tastes good, now wait, you get to heaven. And uh, you get that new glorified body, and all the things that's going to make for a perfect body the way God intended for us to be back in the Garden of Eden. And we put down this flesh, no more trials, struggles, and no more going through the things your pastor's been through of late, no more sugar diabetes, thank God, no more arthritis, hallelujah, no more back pain anymore. Thank God, man, to be delivered. And Jesus has delivered. But until then, while we're here doing this earthly journey, as spiritual beings, we are going to have some struggles along the way. I don't know if you're like me, but man, there are times when uh, my flesh gets irritated. You know, I mean, I just get, I, I can't stand myself. You know, I struggle with myself. My biggest problem is me. 
I mean, you know, I know sometimes when I'm on the interstate and somebody's wanting to drive 50 the minimum speed or 45 the minimum speed, I'm wanting to run the maximum speed. And they got to get in my lane and they drive me insane. Now, that's a short drive, I want you to know, because I, I don't know why, but I'll let my flesh get so irritated. I'm, man, i got a destination to get to. Get over in the right lane. I've got to go. And they'll still just be there, and as sure as I pass them on the right, then they move over once I get around them. And my flesh wants to erupt and just, you know, I, I'm saying, that's why I don't have, like, you know, fish and Jesus stickers and River of Life bumper stickers on my car. I, I don't want to embarrass the kingdom of God or the church either. Because, you know, I, I'm a race car driver every weekend, and, and uh, there I just run into them. I just knock them out of the way, and we're done with them. But I can't do that out here on the highway. It's a good thing when you wake up in the morning, you're not in jail. I just want you to know that when you wake up at home and you realize you didn't hurt somebody that day before. But my flesh, if it, if it, if it were not restrained by the Holy Spirit, there is no telling what I may have done in my past days. In fact, I would say the prisons are filled with people that are incarcerated today because they didn't have a restraint of their flesh. I mean, they didn't wake up one morning and say, well, I just think I'm going to beat somebody up today, or I think I'm going to rob a bank today, or I'm going to kill somebody today, or I'm going to steal something today. They, they woke up, and then there may have been an escalating temptation that increasingly got larger and larger, and as a consequence, they yield to their flesh, and they have a momentary satisfaction, and the moment they commit the act, then suddenly the fear encroaches into their life and they realize what they've done is wrong and as a consequence of that they go and land in prison they had to deal with the aftermath of not restraining the flesh and I don't thank God for the Holy Spirit of God that enables us along the way. And I want to talk about the Spirit-empowered life. Dear Lord knows I need to have the Spirit-empowered life. And there are days when I'm good at it and other days when I'm not so good at it. So I want to give you some, what I think, some elements that will perpetually help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, he uses as an analogy alcohol. And he says, don't be drunk with wine in which is excess. Now, he's describing that lifestyle when he says in excess and he's talking about a riotous way of living. He says, these are unruly, out of control people. Why? Because they're controlled by another substance. That's why he uses that analogy. Because if a man's filled with alcohol, he's suddenly controlled by that. And as a consequence, he's not in control. If I am filled with anger, <clears throat> I will be controlled by my anger rather than by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. So he says, listen, don't, don't do that. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to be filled yeah. with the Spirit. Now, if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit of God, I begin to produce the fruits of the Spirit. Now, some people, because of their lack of knowledge and, and maybe lack of understanding of the Word of God, when we start talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, they get all nervous because they think the church is going to get out of control. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, most Baptists are not in any danger of getting out of control. In fact, I'd rather try to calm them, calm them down than to fire them up. Man, as an evangelist, I, most places I go are dead as a hammer, son, and they need some life. They just show up, I mean, half asleep. In fact, Baptists have developed a unique ability. They have learned to sleep with their eyes open. What he say, Ethel Hunt? I mean, man, I'm saying we're in here to celebrate the resurrected yeah. Jesus Christ yeah. who is alive forevermore. Yeah. I mean, the opportunity to be saved is available to every person that is under the sound of my voice. Man, think about it. If you're here today lost, you can be saved right now and delivered and set free and you get to go to heaven when you die and you get to be used by God in a powerful way to fulfill your God-given reason for your existence. Mm -mm. I like what was said uh, 
by Thomas Akimbus when he was writing about the, he was reflecting on the, he was talking about the imitation of Christ. He was talking about our struggles. And here's what he said. See if you identify with this. He said, Lord, I confess my sinfulness. I acknowledge my weakness. Often it is but a small matter that defeats and troubles me. I wonder if you're defeated and troubled today. He said, I resolve to act boldly, but when I am assailed even by a small temptation, I am in sore straits. From a trifling thing sometimes arises a strong temptation. And when I am secure, I am almost overwhelmed just by a mere breath. I am weary of living constantly at conflict. My weakness is apparent to me, for evil fancies rush in on me more readily than they depart. Mm, mm, mm. God help us. You know, the Bible talks about all the great men and women of God and how they were filled with the Holy Spirit of God. It talks about John the Baptist was filled in his mother's womb with the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus came back from the 40 days of temptation filled with the Holy Ghost. And I figure if Jesus needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost, how much more do we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost? So let me give you these elements. I, I was thinking about the early church and how the Lord said, now listen, I want you to stay put until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. So he was not going to be with them anymore. He understood. He, you remember what he said in John 14? I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit of God and you'll be able to do more than I did. Why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit of God that can be in you and rest on your bodies and on, on all the work and ministry that you're able to fulfill. In fact, the Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 2 or chapter 3, verse 20, rather. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask, according to the power that worketh in us. I wonder how much of God's power is at work inside of us. Once Moody, D.L. Moody, a great evangelist of years gone by, uh, he was asked to come and lead a, an evangelistic campaign and so some of the pastors had gathered together to discuss that opportunity. And um, one of them said this, and, and unfortunately it was one of the elder pastors. He said, why do we need this Mr. Moody? He's uneducated, inexperienced. Who does he think he is anyway? Does he think that he has a monopoly on the Holy Spirit? And a younger, wiser pastor responded and said, no. But the Holy Spirit has a monopoly on Mr. Moody. Man, may the Holy Spirit have a monopoly on us. May we yield to the Holy Spirit in such a fashion every day. Man, wouldn't it be awesome if we could yield to the Holy Spirit as easily as we can yield to our flesh? Mm -mm. I find it easy to yield to my flesh. You know, I, I find it really easy to, I mean, it just like it erupts inside of us sometimes. You know, even, even like, like he said, even a trifling thing or, you know, sometimes there's such a, uh, an instinctive nature there, that old nature that just wants to, it wants to rebel, it wants to yield to anything it wants to yield to and submit itself to satisfy, immediate satisfaction is what the flesh wants. But as a consequence, sometimes it is a, it is tragic what resolves out of our yielding to the flesh. So I want to give you some elements that are of a life perpetually filled with the Holy Spirit. Number one, faith. Faith is saying, I believe that I can be filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, if the Lord says here, be filled with the Holy Spirit, then He doesn't make such a statement and then you can't experience that. In other words, if He's telling you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you've got to have the faith to believe, hey, I... A born-again Christian, I can be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Man, it's awesome to know that we can be controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. I'm glad that He can control every aspect of my life in the worst of environments and help me to be a testimony, much like Job's faith when he trusted and believed God, even when he experienced the decimation and the loss of everything he had, he still had faith in his God. Amen. 
I don't always pass all those tests. I don't know that I've gotten there yet. After 35 years, you'd think I'd be doing a little bit better along the journey. And I know some people personify as if they're the great spiritual giants of the land and that they never have any issues. Well, I'm sorry. I've been saved 35 years. I've been preaching for about 34 years, and I still have troubles along the way. I don't always, you know, do the right thing. I don't always act the right way, and, and sometimes I just get frustrated in my flesh and you know thank God for the restraints that I have hallelujah I'm grateful for that but I don't always walk up on the mountaintop man there's a lot of valleys in my journey in life so I thank God that if I have faith to believe I can be filled with the Holy Spirit of God listen he says in Luke chapter 11 verse 13 if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Now there's a word of faith, man. I've got to believe that God says if I ask Him to fill me with the Holy Spirit of God, He can fill me. Listen, the filling of the Holy Spirit of God is just not for the spiritual giants of pastors or missionaries. Hallelujah, man. It's for all God's children. I mean, every one of you ought to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's a life of faith that says I can be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. That's what we're waiting on until we get the brand new glorified body. And then the next element is obedience. Realizing that I should be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. This is not a suggestion, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is a command of Jesus. It is a command of God's Word. He's telling me, you better get filled with the Holy Spirit of God because I know what's ahead of you, and if you're not prepared for it, you won't be able to withstand it. I think there are many that have had unfortunate circumstances that have led them to derail and they become John 6, 6, 6 people. You know what it says in John chapter 6, verse 66? It says, And from that time, many went back and walked no more with him. What an indictment. People that didn't get filled with the Holy Spirit of God, and they yielded to their flesh. You know, we're not promised here a, a, a rose garden along this journey here on this earth, man. We're down here on an assignment. We have a mission. We have a life mission. Yes, and you cannot fulfill that without the Holy Spirit of God. And I've got to learn to obey God and so say, I want to be filled. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20, What? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You are under new management. When I got saved, and Terry got saved, we were baptized. Why? Because when we got saved at our house, nobody could physically see what transpired when we bowed our heads and asked Jesus to forgive us and to save us of our sins. So we went to the church, walked down the aisle, and the next Sunday or two, they baptized us. And what it said was this, my old man was alive, and now he's buried, he's crucified, he's raised up to be a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm glad God gave us the picture of baptism. It shows us that the old man is dead. Now, I want him to stay crucified. I don't like the old Dennis D's. I thank God that I've been born again, that I am a part of the family of God, that you become a child of Almighty God. And listen, you need to represent your father well, folks, because he is the father of glories. He's the father of heaven. He is our creator. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord God Almighty. This is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Man, people need to see Christians in Christians. 
They need to see Christianity is about us and that it has transformed our life. I think some people don't care about going to the house of God or being around Christians because they don't see one ounce of change. I want you to know when you get saved, you get changed. You're not who you used to be. Your old desires die. You have brand new appetites, new desires, new drives, new ambitions, and all those old things are crucified and they're gone. They're meaningless. Paul the apostle said, I can all that stuff but dung, refuge, garbage compared to the new life that I have in Jesus Christ. But folks, they need to see it today. This world's in desperation out here and uh, they're searching in a lot of places and they're not finding the answer. I can tell you right now, many, many, all these, listen, every, there's only one way to get to God and His name is Jesus. That's never changed. In fact, if there was any other access to God, then pray tell me why would God Almighty let His Son die on the cross? That would have been foolish to allow His Son to die if there's another way to get to heaven. You wouldn't do that. That's because that was the only way to make it happen. It was the way to defeat Lucifer. Thank God the devil's been defeated. Hallelujah. And then thirdly, there's dependency is another great element. You know, I'm weak and fruitless without him in the kingdom of God. And I like what old Charles Finley, Finley said, and he's another great evangelist, led thousands of people to Christ. Here, here's, what, here's what he said. He wrote how God gave him mighty infillings of the Holy Ghost. And he said, that went through me as it seemed body and soul. I immediately found myself endued with such power from on high that a few words dropped here and there to individuals were the means of their immediate conversion. My words seemed to fasten like barbed arrows in the souls of men. They cut like a sword. They broke in the heart like a hammer. Multitudes can attest to this, he went on to say. Sometimes... I would find myself in great measure empty of this power. I would go and visit and find that I made no saving impression. I would exhort and pray with the same results. I would then depart for a day for private fasting and prayer. After humbling myself and crying out for help, the power would return unto me with all its freshness. This has been the experience of my life. Wow. You know, it's a good day when we realize how weak and frail we are and how much we need the Holy Spirit of God. When there is a sense of dependency. You know, it says in the book of Zechariah, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. I don't care if you educate your flesh. You, I, I know people that can, they can strut sitting down, son. They, they think they are God's gift to everybody and they know it all and they are, man, sometimes I get around preachers and I just get sick in my stomach. I just want to walk off and say, you know, if y'all are that good and that great, well, the Lord have mercy. Don't let me get around because I'll spoil you, man. I'll make bad meat out of you. I just want you to know that I, I'm, just, I'm a, just a struggler down here, you know, and I know we all want to look up to people of great image and well, praise the Lord, I can reach that same status. And thank God I look at a man like John the Baptist and Jesus said he was a great man of God. But the fact of the matter is when the old boy was in prison, he had a great crisis of faith and he sent his disciples and said, hey, are you really the one? Even John the Baptist had a weakness of the flesh, had a crisis of faith and wondered if Jesus was the one or not. Just a thought from your friendly evangelist. Y'all all right? <laughs> Paul said, I planted and Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. You know, as an evangelist, I got enough sense to know that if I come in the house of God and, and tons of people get saved, and you know, and, and I never know. One minute a lot of people get saved, and the next minute nobody gets saved. But if a lot of people get saved, guess what? It's not just because I'm up there preaching. It's because there's been a praying mama, praying daddy, praying grandparents. 
a godly, faithful Sunday school teacher down there just teaching the Word of God every Sunday, week after week, not seeing any visible results as a consequence of all their labor, all their commitment, all their time. Maybe it's a faithful pastor like Brother Donnie This preaches the Word of God week in and week out. It keeps on, keeping on, keeping on. And then by the grace of God, I come in and it's harvest day. And all of a sudden there's a moving and a sweeping of the Holy Spirit of God and lives are changed and, and they're reached and families are restored and people's souls are saved. Why? Because we all, Paul planted, Apollos watered, somebody else de-weeds, somebody else fertilizes. And it's the process all coming together and it's only God that can give the increase. I'm going to tell you, when you think you're the one giving increase... You know, I, you know what I've discovered about people? They can more readily embrace failure than they can success. Some people, they, some people have the talents and the gifts to get them to the highest elevated position, but they don't have the integrity to keep them there when they get there. You need the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, folks, in every aspect of your life. None of us are that good. When you have a ministry that breaks out and it's unexplainable and there's a mighty move of God and there have been events across this country where scores of people would just move into a church. and I mean, when I was pastor at 101st at one time, we had a revival for six solid weeks, man. But it was a God thing. And everyone understood that it was God and people kept coming. But it was God that was getting, it was just that reaping time. And I'm sorry, sometimes, yes, you have great mountaintop experience, but sometimes there are valleys that you go through. And sometimes church is exciting and sometimes it's a little bit in a wall. And I mean, let's face it, trying to get to the house of God sometimes is an absolute overwhelming task just trying to get in the house of God, trying to get out of the bed in the morning time, trying to get dressed trying to get here and by the time you get here you're already exhausted fussing and fighting my oldest son's here today James and uh, but when they was little James and Cody and Bridget man we'd get in the minivan and uh, we only lived next door to church but we'd drive the minivan to church and get knocked down and drag out five where we got the house of God man <laughs> They'd get in the back and they'd be picking on one another and he touched me, she touched me. You know, and I'm saying, dear God, I'm trying to get to church and I'm trying to, you know, just keep my patience and they'd be fussing and, and I'd go to hit them and they'd lean back, you know. And I learned the trick, so I'd stomp the brakes, lunge them forward, pop, 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 all three of them at one time. Straight down that back seat back there. What was wrong with y'all? Lord have mercy. And we'd get to the house of God and I'd jump out that minivan, mad as fire, jump out. And what's sad about that, somebody said, oh, if we could be like that godly little family right over there, Preacher D's and his family. <laughs> Lord, I mean, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost when I go to bed. Fill me with the Holy Ghost when I wake up because my flesh stinks. So... There's got to be dependency, faith, obedience. Then there needs to be commitment. I mean, a desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You know, the Bible says, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. God help me to walk in the Spirit. And the, and the Bible talks about it in Galatians 5, 24, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And that's a good word. Just to say, Lord, help me to be committed to truly walk in the Spirit. And then... Fifth, understanding, knowing how to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. It says in John 14, 7, listen to this. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. Now, if it seems like if they can't see him, then we should be able to see him. Every now and then I'll get one of these devices... And I'll go down a little short road. And all of a sudden, me and a bunch of folks will get picked up off the ground. And we'll take off in a jet. And there's a force that picks us up off the ground that none of us can see. It's called the wind. 
It's invisible, but the evidence is that plane takes off. And the Holy Spirit of God is not visible, but you can see the fruit and the movement of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. And, I, and God help us, folks, to be careful about who we criticize and critique and condemn in ministry because they may be doing a ministry the Holy Spirit won't seem to do. And I think the best thing we do is mind our own business and let's do the business we're supposed to. Some people spend their whole ministry condemning and critiquing and criticizing everybody else on the planet instead of just simply doing what they're supposed to do. Some people think they got the gift of criticism. Brother, you want to give us a gift to give us a gift of criticism? What's your word of condemnation for today? Man, thank God, man. I got enough sense. I don't have time to worry about every other preacher on this country. I am so busy dealing with Dennis Dees that I don't have time to deal with everybody else and every other preachers, you know? I don't want false doctrine taught, but I'm gonna listen, I can't stop them unless y'all just want me to go over there and just shoot them. Bam! Quit, quit preaching that. But I can preach the truth everywhere I go and let people know what the truth is and let them be set free by the truth of the word of Almighty God. And then last, Baptist, in conclusion, your favorite words in Baptist life, consistency. He says, listen to this, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now what, here's what it says in the Greek. It says, be being kept filled with the Holy Spirit. Be being kept filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Be consistently. If you find your flesh erupting, depressing you, overwhelming you, stop what you're doing and say, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Because my flesh is trying to control me and that's not a godly thing. You crucified my flesh, and I want to live under you, so fill me with the Holy Spirit. Folks, I don't, I don't think this is complicated. I, I seriously don't. I just don't think we think about it enough. I, I think we, just, we think more about the devil and the flesh than we do God and the Holy Spirit. We have great opportunity afforded us to be able to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God and be used. I mean, I think people are looking for something that is unique and different. And when they see us in an environment of darkness and we're the light, it speaks volumes to people. You know, I love being in the race and ministry that I'm in, you know, because I have great opportunity. You know, I raced Friday night and I raced last night up in Coburn. And uh, Friday night, I spent the latter part of my ministry just sitting down talking to some people ministering God's grace in that environment. They, they may not come to the house of God, but my responsibility is everywhere I go to simply share Jesus and, and be a word of encouragement to let people know that Almighty God does love them. And I'm going to tell you, this life out here is filled with a bunch of problems and there's all kinds of things here that eat your guts up, man. It, the devil came to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your ambitions, your drives in life. But Thank God Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. And by the grace of God, we can be filled with the Holy Ghost of God and we can live a life that brings glory and honor to the living Savior who's alive, who conquered death, hell, and the grave. And he's alive forevermore, praise God. Boy, I'm glad I'm saved today. I'm just glad I'm saved, man. Hallelujah, I'm glad I'm saved. I get to go to heaven when I die, man. Glory. Let's stand together. <coughs> Faith, obedience, dependency, commitment, understanding, purity, and consistency. You know, I was thinking about the purity aspect. It says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. It says, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Y'all know when he's grieved. And I think when he's grieved, what do we need to do? Immediately run and ask for forgiveness. I dare say we all need to ask him to forgive us for our lack of faith, our lack of being filled with the Holy Spirit of God, for our non-Christ-like behavior. It may be in our family. It could be on our job. It could be out here on the highway. It could be in the mall. You know, and it, it can... Uh, and you know what? It can damage your testimony. You know? 
I had a preacher recently. I was in a place getting something to eat. And he just sort of went off. That was a year ago. But you know what? Last Sunday, I was, I was listening to him, and he actually admitted and apologized about that. And I thought, thank God, you know, he dealt with it. I know it can be frustrating. If y'all like me, Lord knows I go to Walmart. Dear God Almighty, I don't know what it is, but it, I, I get in the line, and it, the computer breaks down. I, and and I'm, first of all, I only got two lights on and the whole daggum thing. And I'm saying, you know, and I don't want to go doggone self checkout. I, I don't want to do it. I got bananas. How do you self check out a banana? I don't understand how you do it. And I'm saying, I, I want to get in the line and just get out of the store. They will put, they'll let you get in the store. They will build a parking lot big enough for everybody can get in. The problem is, they will not let you get out. You cannot buy a product and just walk out the door. And I get in line, and next thing I know, I've got to go get in the other line. Well, everybody else doesn't got in line in front of me. Now I'm back here in the long line, and now I've got 50 people, and I've got one banana. And I'm saying, I just want to get out of the store. I, I, and, and by the time I get to the register, she says, I'm sorry, we're closed. No, lady, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to murder you in, in Walmart. And then I say, wait a minute, I'm a Christian, I can't kill people. Oh my God, help me Jesus. Help me, fill me with the Holy Ghost, God. Help me not to cuss nobody here today. But I have been so mad if somebody wrote a cuss word on a piece of paper, I would have signed it. I was frustrated. <coughs> Jesus, help this poor preacher to be a good testimony. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's hard. It, do you not think it's hard? Do y'all struggle like I struggle? Oh, yeah. Maybe I'm the only transparent preacher on the planet. But I, I almost want y'all to know I'm just like y'all. Yeah. <laughs> but it sure can't hurt your testimony, can it? Boy, yes. a lot of people's wounded. You know, David wounded his testimony. Gave into his flesh. And listen, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Remember when, he gave, when, he, when the Lord called me, he filled him with the Holy Ghost. But he still gave into the flesh. So here's what I'm kind of wondering. Ooh, I wonder what's ahead of us that's going to be a temptation. I'm appealing to all of you. Yield to the Holy Spirit. And if you've already failed, right here's the altar. Let's just deal with it today. Now let me just tell you, when you put it on the altar before Jesus and ask for forgiveness, it's done. So You can't change your past, but you can't have a new ending. So just choose today, I'm sorry, dear God. And if you've offended somebody, just go make it right. I, I had to go apologize to somebody the other day at the racetrack because I didn't follow up on something I should have done. I forgot to call them. And uh, I, I, I think they were upset with me. And I went right to their face and I dealt with it. As redemptively as I knew how, it still bothers me. Because I don't, when people who call me back, you call me back. It, there's no excuse for not calling somebody back. You, 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 if you, your word as a Christian means something. So if you tell somebody you're going to do something, do it. And make, can, I just, can, I, can I just dig a little bit deeper? And when you say you're going to be somewhere at a certain time, be there a little, get there on time. And if you're building a contract, you say, I'm going to be there at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Be there at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Value other people's time. Just a thought from your friendly evangelist. All right? So let's deal with it. I wonder who's not saved today. Who wants to be saved today? Who wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost? So I'm going to invite everyone who wants to be saved. I'm going to be standing right here. We're going to have some other men that will help you. Some ladies. Man, if you want to get saved, we want you to be saved. Now, Christians, let's deal with our, let's deal with our flesh, okay? Let's just make confession before the good Lord. Let's deal with our weaknesses. Let's get filled with the Holy Ghost. He told us to get filled. Let's come and ask Him to fill us. Let Him fill you to overflowing before we leave this place today. You come on right now, would you?